Hey everybody, welcome to the webinar. We're just gonna jump right in here so we don't waste any time. Listen, this is a very timely topic. Um, I'm hoping that you caught this before we're doing live. I'm gonna leave this out there for a little bit. Uh, this, If you're catching the recorded version of this, uh, it's only a few days old, so um, you may wanna uh, be aware of that. Okay, please take everything you think you know, take that set of glasses off. This is your experience. This is the way you see the world. Take it off and watch this through my glasses just for a little bit of time, okay? Just for this moment. Pretend that what you think you know, maybe you don't know as well as you do, okay? Pretend. I'm sure there's plenty that you know that you could teach this entire group individually okay we all have contribution but listen to me just a little bit on this okay we're talking about protecting your HVAC business through HVAC greatness and what is HVAC greatness well being the best in business is not enough you have to be perceived as the best and there's more to it than that my name is Pete Ramsey I am the founder and owner of HVAC greatness and a newer program called the HVAC X factor what is that X factor that sets you the HVAC contractor aside those are my two main platforms. Guys, I've been around for 38 years. Uh, that's me in the top left-hand corner uh, in the Army uniform when I was stationed in Honduras, pretending to work on a, on a uh, reach-in unit. There's a reefer unit, we called it. Basically, those hung on, like, it was like a barg that hung on the side of the wall. They'd hang on the side of the cooler box, and we worked on those. Um, I've, I've done residential, I've done commercial. That was my business down there on the bottom left. I've been in training after training after training. Top right-hand corner, that's Ron Smith and myself. Um, I've been through a lot of training, worked with Linux for many years, for, worked for Goodman for just a little bit. The point is, I've been around a while. I put myself out on Facebook, on YouTube. You may have heard through me through there. I do some online training uh, through private groups as well as uh, online specific where you can log in. The point is, guys, I'm not somebody standing up here to pretend that I know something. I, I know your world because I've walked many a mile in it. I, have not, only, I not only have the scars on my back, on my hands, right? The, the burn right across here from, from that suction line, you just brazed in and reaching over doing the discharge line. <laughs> right? I've got the, I've, I've, I've breathed the phosgene gas, guys. And most importantly, I've stared at the ceiling all night wondering how I'm gonna make payroll next week. I've stared at the ceiling at night wondering what are the guys gonna do on Monday because that job canceled. I've been there, okay? That's all I'm trying to say here. We are turning into a different situation. I really wanna bring this up. You guys, unless you live on another planet, should be aware that we are in a debt situation as a country, United States I'm referring to, uh, like never before in the history. Now, because the United States is such a pivotal um, piece to the global pie, it doesn't matter if you're in Canada or somewhere else, you, you still want to pay attention on this. Something worldwide is happening right now. Here's an article from Forbes magazine and it's mentioning six reasons why inflation will not be transitory. Well, we're gonna talk about the next step beyond inflation. We're gonna be talking about deflation briefly before we get into the HVAC aspect of this. But these are some of the elements that they cited. They talked about excessive levels of debt. We just talked about that. We're, we're as a nation, we're heavily in debt. It's not our fault, it's our uh, <laughs> lack of government, if you want to say. Anyway, record fiscal deficit spending combined with record monetary stimulus. We're just spending like, like we're just rich, right? And uh, we're not. Deglobalization. We've seen so much work go out and some of it's coming back. And so we are in a unique situation right now. Energy prices on the rise. Uh, they're raising the minimums on pay. So we're seeing pay going up. We're seeing the dollar depreciate. And I want to talk about this piece just briefly. Okay, I've mentioned to some of you on some prior videos, go buy XRP. <laughs> and what I was talking about on that, that uh, right now, the Security and Exchange Commission is in a lawsuit. It's been going for uh, quite a long time, I guess about eight months. And it's, in my perception, this is a bit of a show, okay? This is coming. XRP is a digital asset you call it a crypto coin, a Bitcoin is not the same. I'm not talking about Bitcoin, I'm not talking about Ether or Ethereum, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about proof of work. I'm talking about 
using the digital technology of blockchain for decentralized finance and how it's changing everything and they pretend that we're gonna have a lawsuit and we have to regulate this guys they know what they're doing and they are way ahead here's the proof these are the players that are already in partnerships right now we're talking central banks including the Federal Reserve we're talking the IMF International Monetary Fund the BIS the Bank of International Set Settlements SDRs or special drawing rights this is kind of like the money for the central banks right this is the money for the money cross-border payments where today if I'm down in Indonesia and you send me a hundred dollars I might get that money in you know three to four business days and everybody takes a bite out of it and everything else versus the new decentralized finance where not like Bitcoin and stuff like that I'm talking about the real stuff that they don't want to want you to know about where if I'm in Indonesia and I send you the Indonesian rupa and you're in Canada receiving the Canadian dollar I send it to you in three two one it's in your it's in your account they call that liquidity when they can take and they can cross borders and mix any kind of money they want it just comes out just like that you don't have to sit around and have all these uh all these um uh, these monies in in uh in escrow and and, and held you know in as in terms of investments all that stuff's been cleaned up and this is happening now that's the point um decentralized finance DeFi versus uh centralized finance speed of settlement permanent transactions because we know the right they're pegged to precious metals private encryption something called NFT non fungible uh, non fungible tokens what that means is um, guaranteed uh, certified uh, uh, unique uh, uh, digital assets so all of that's leading up to a point it's coming and it's getting ready to hit you uh, consumer goods are starting to drop you'll see that first this means we're going into uh, deflation government handouts are going to be reducing these companies that are dropping their prices are going to start to make less profits you'll see I'm starting to let let people go um, the government is going to discontinue handing that money out and people are gonna to have to go back to work so the problems that we have been having are going to, are, get, are getting ready to change banks are cutting credit lines did you see the Wells Fargo art, article where they're 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 pulling personal credit lines I'm here in business credit lines banks I just saw I think it was Bank of America trying to sell 1.24 billion dollars worth of debt they're trying to get cash on hand why what does that mean to us guys is coming and most of us will never see it and I predict that a huge percentage of business owners today HVACs especially are not going to be in business this time next year I, I really think that so all of this stuff is coming to a head we've got you know the new system that's rolling out they they call this the the reset or whatever but guys this is all planned out okay it's happening call it what you may you, if you watch the mainstream media you may disagree with me. it doesn't matter um, doesn't it make sense to be prepared just in case what if Pete is right and uh, there's a lot more to this I was watching uh, the there's something going on right now in uh, in the trading world that could crash the entire stock market and there goes Pete Crown Wolf again we've heard that for so long but this is real this is different the SEC literally had to create something new to avert this and I don't know that they've averted it because I I'm, I'm my eyes are on this particular one but anyway let's go back to you your business what do you do to protect yourself well right now I would not be taking on unnecessary debt because remember you may have that credit line right and you may be depending on that but if the banks have to make a decision between holding on to cash or lending it out holding on to it and taking care of themselves or lending it out and taking care of their customers I think you know what's gonna happen your credit line is gone and so you want to hold a strong cash position now you don't want everything in cash you're gonna to have to diversify your investments and make sure that you're invested in things that have you know low risks with when the economy goes a little bit rough so whether the entire economy is troubled or your local economy or you individually 
these are important steps that you'll want to take. Now, I want to talk about two that we can apply specifically to business. And I think that this was actually developed over a period of, of last year or so when we put all this together uh, on this particular program. And it was really designed for a different reason, but it's such a good fit for right now. We have got to reduce unnecessary business spending. We've got to optimize your sales opportunities. Spend less money, make more money, and do it with what you got now. You are wasteful, and that's what we're talking about. You got to do more marketing and do less advertising. B didn't marketing and advertising the same thing. Well, for some people, they think so, but it's not. Um, advertising is a subset of marketing. And advertising is something, you know, you can put an ad out and, and, you know, you're trying to get new attention and business and everything else. But marketing is something that you do universally. This is brand shaping and developing. This is your reputation by design. The things that you do before your customers come in and buy from you, but also the things that you do during and after. That is marketing. And if you know how to market you, it really puts you in a strong advantage because when we're looking at all the different aspects to this, okay, I get a lead, okay? Is it a warm lead? Is it a cold lead? You know, you paid for leads, right? And, and it ends up being a piece of junk lead, right? Um, the cost of new customer acquisition, not new leads, new customer acquisition. All these different variables and these questions. So when we're advertising for new customers, we've got the cost per lead, yeah, but what about the cost for conversion? I might spend $1,000 and get 10 leads, that's $100 a lead. But heck, if only one of them buys, that's $1,000 per customer. You get that? You need the entire process in place. Okay, return on investment. You know, you put money out there, you put energy out there, you've got to get return on that investment. Uh, the quality of each lead, are you advertising to people that you really don't want as customers? Is your marketing and advertising agent advertising to people that you really don't want? Do you know how to attract your ideal customer avatar or do you even know what your ideal customer avatar is? The lead temperature, is it a warm lead, is it a hot lead, is it a cold, what, you know, how ready to buy are they? And what about the, again, the customer types? It's been categorized as three, offer base, experience base, and fan base. Offer base means what's your offer? How much? What's the discount? You got a rebate, right? Experience base, they're gonna ask you questions like, Okay, how, how long have you been in business? Uh-huh. Uh, how many trucks do you have on the road? These are buying questions because they have been burnt. And these are customers that they're not worried about how much they pay. They're worried more about, are you going to be around to take care of me? Fan bases, well, they're, they're on your team. You've already proven yourself. Okay? So when you're advertising to people, uh, there's certain aspects about acquiring new customers. You've got to break them in. Okay? They, gotta, they come from one mindset and maybe total ignorance or misconception and you're going to have to bring them on board and you're going to lose a percentage of them. Why? They do not know you. They got to get to know you. They do not like you. You got to do something or perform, you know, interact in a way that allows them to like you. And they got to trust you. Can, how do you prove yourself trustworthy? Right? Are you leaving that up to random technicians, people skills? <laughs> Oxymoron, just kidding, text. But are you leaving it up to the individual or you, do you have a process that's going to help them uh, build that trust naturally, uh, organically? So, and um, how many of these customers that you're just throwing advertising at or just value-based, they're just looking for the cheapest thing because they don't know how to measure anything else when it comes to HVAC. They don't know. They've not had the experience yet. And how many of them saw somebody else's ad, complete four-ton system for $4,500 installed, right? And, you know, come on. So... Pete is hit up all the time, you know, hey, Pete, how would you like three to four more leads? Could you use this? Could you? I'm hit up all the time. Most of these companies aren't really companies. These are individuals that are crossing into our market because they've learned a certain skill set. And many of them are new and many of them are not as experienced. And many of them don't know how to apply it to our industry and they don't understand the differences. You need a good advertiser. Get you a good one. And start to measure that stuff because you're going to have to supplement your existing customers. But this program is focused on taking advantage of the opportunities that are right with you right now. Your existing customers, they already know you. They already like you. They already trust you. 
you have a relationship and your technicians your frontline team they're comfortable with these customers because they're the ones that go in and out their homes every day or small businesses and generally there's very little resistance encountered when you start to bring up issues to these customers you've done the work so new customers are best when they come from existing customers we're talking about referrals here guys you know, we've got organic growth yes but fan customer referrals are powerful this isn't hey call my buddy Pete this is oh my gosh we've had companies out here they were total disaster you got to get our guy Pete he does this and that and the other right that's that's what happens and they're like minded birds of a feather flock together your best customers hang around people that are likely to be more best customers because they share the same values and, and, and they and, and understandings okay and they're experience based generally now let's see if you can understand this I'm gonna put my mouse on here if this little blue circle represents your new uh, customer you're in their house and it's blue because they're cold right if they don't like what they see they're gone that's what the down arrow means I'm gone I'm out but you know if they like it they may move over into your prior customer uh, group and prior customers you know we, you've been out there a time or two and if they need you they'll call you and you know they may, they may tell other people about you and they'll come in but it's just kind of a lukewarm um, moment here but if your internal marketing is strong that we convert more new over into more prior occasional customers if you will and then that moves over into your members these are the ones that are fan based these are the ones that are hot for you they love you and when they tell others about you and these new customers come in they don't come in so blue right they, 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 they shift right over into this more often but if you don't have a sound process in re fortifying the rapport and trust that you've already earned you're gonna lose them as well and you're leaving that up to your technicians based on what you think you know about them and I got news for you there's things about them and the interaction with your customers that if you knew you're <laughs> you'd be angry <laughs> let's just say that but you know what Pete that's not me my customers love me you don't understand my customers. no listen to me a second take those glasses off and look at them through let's look at them through your competition your customers your, your competition say my customers love me well what about this what about that waitress that gives you poor service in a restaurant are you gonna be rude to her are you gonna let her have it are you gonna tell her what you think or do you realize that she's in the back room back in the kitchen handling your food and there's no way you can see it you can there's no way you can see what she's actually doing are you gonna treat her right or are you gonna are you gonna take that risk most people don't want to risk that and they're not gonna be rude to her you know besides that if if let's say you're on a budget you've heard this one you're on a budget and you know you know this is a good price and it's pretty good food I think you know I don't want to rock that boat so I'll put up with her you know but it's, it doesn't mean I'm in I, I'm loving her service and I want to be here I mean how many options in the restaurant business around here do I have to choose from right so I'm being nice to her because she's cheap I'm being nice to her because I want to eat on a regular basis what what she's what the kitchen is serving besides she may have to serve me again one day I don't want to be rude to her I don't like confrontations think about your customers wait till I tell my friends listen our customers many times make us think that we love them in all actuality it's just because they don't want to be confrontational and they know they're gonna need you again they don't love you except for when they do yeah people my Google reviews tell me different they love me love okay let's talk about your competition again well let's say your competition says their Google reviews are the best too but yet they're standing right over the top of the customer saying can I get that Google review will you give me a review today are they giving you a Google review because your technician is standing right there when you know they're not going to say what they really think kind of pressing the issue but is it really coming from the heart what about the law of reciprocity what is it that they are looking to receive in return for leaving your review that you may not be aware of uh, and you know what is their true motive for doing that go look at your Google reviews right now 
And I want you to look for something called, well, not right now, as soon as we finish. Look for something called emotionally charged words in the review. Pete was amazing. And then the, then the next line following that usually tells you what, the, what they valued out of, out of that interaction that made them say that. What was so amazing? Very affordable. Is that amazing? Very affordable? They just compared me to somebody else's higher price and determined they went with me because I'm cheaper. Very affordable. Honesty is awesome. That's good. Pete showed up in 20 minutes. Guys, Pete just happened to be in the neighborhood or Pete just happened to be free with no work to do. Yeah, of course I showed up in 20 minutes. I can't promise that all the time. I'm not big enough. If I've got trucks in your neighborhood, yeah, I can probably respond. But even then, you may have to wait a day or two. If that's their values because you showed up in 30 minutes or less like Domino's Pizza used to, <laughs> somebody's going to have an accident, right? The, the point is, your Google reviews are important in today's market. But let's look beyond what they appear to be saying and look, let's look at what they could be saying. Do they love you or do they love your technician? Do they love your company or do they love your tech? And if they're loving your technician, why? What is your technician doing or giving away or discounting or taking care of at no additional cost that you aren't being told about? I mean, your technician's sitting there thinking, look, it's my customer. I'm the one they're dealing with, not you, boss. And you know what? I don't like to let the customer down. I feel sorry for some of these customers. I like that feeling of being the hero. Right? I want to help them. Not rip them off like you're doing, boss. So, and their mindset might be, here, Mr. Homeowner, I'm going to take care of this for you while I'm here, but don't say anything. The boss won't have to know. Well, of course they're going to give you a great review. Young Pete was out here, and he's so great. He's such a good person. Everybody likes to feel special, but if, if you don't address this, you've got an issue. If, you're, if your techs don't understand your pricing and they're not on board, and you don't give them a way to make their customers feel like, make them know that they're taking care of their customers and make their customers you know, appreciate the fact that they've been taken care of, that you did a little something for them, well, you're disarming your techs. This needs to be built into the process as well. Okay, your strategy. Everybody likes to take and go for those you know, high margins. Okay, I sold this job way down here. I sold this job right here. But if I can just sell this job up here, more of these, well, that's what I want. You know, I mean, this looks great on, on paper, but what is this doing for your culture? What is this doing for your customers? This is counterintuitive. But I want you to consider a different strategy. Let's come up with a really good margin that's fair to everybody. And let's get rid of these down here. And, and you know, if they're overpriced margins, we've got to get rid of them too. That, that's the point. Creating a better strategy means taking off the blindfolds. It means seeing things for what they really are. That's how you win. That's why customers love you. It's because you're a cut above. So everybody's got to win. Your technician has to be on board. Your company has to be taken care of. And your homeowner needs to feel special because it's not about the equipment. It's about the customer. That equipment may be in love with your technicians, but the equipment doesn't have a telephone. The owner does, and they're the ones that are call you back or not. So here's the, here's the formula. It's really the simple. Step one, rapport. Make them like you on some level. Click with you. Level two, trust. That opens the door. When you have rapport, it opens the door for trust, and there are things that you can say and do that build trust or break trust down. Now, if you already have that established and another technician comes out, you can break rapport and you can lose trust. So a process needs to be building and reinforcing both all the time with every tech because everybody does it. Why do they do it? Because they believe in it. They know it's the right thing to do. Well, we still have a communication issue. I'm going to talk to you about BTUs and superheat and subcooling and balancing your air and amp draw and you know, low of charge and evaporator leak and condenser 
head pressure, all kind of stuff. And your customers here, wah, 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 technical stuff, they don't know what you're talking about. That's why you hear questions like, well, what would you do? Or what do you recommend? That's why trust is so important. But it's not necessary, not to that level. If you follow the communication process that we're gonna be sharing with you in the plan, this is a unique, this is industry unique. You're gonna have an advantage over everybody else. Then comes the transaction, but it doesn't stop there. Transaction number one, has to have that after feeling of warm and fuzzy so that they come back again for another transaction, another transaction, and you have future history with this customer. So building rapport and trust, this is part of a program that we put together, and we've got one here. You don't have to do it like this, this we, but we've gone step by step, not from knocking on the front door and introducing yourself all the way through to pulling out of the driveway. This is non-technical flow to build rapport and reinforce rapport no matter who represents your company, no matter who goes out. So the trust and communication issue, we need to figure out how to do this in a way that we're not depending on a technician's personality and charisma. You may have that one tech that everybody loves, but what if your not so great personality tech followed a process and communicated in a way that didn't require that? What if we replace that missing element? You are wasting your money right now on advertising and going after that little $300 call. And your technician walks out, there's that $300 repair right there. And they walk by two, three, four thousand dollars worth of opportunity. I'm going to take care of that two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars. And what do you do? You go, you go buy more customers. And you're not even taking care of the ones that you have. Stop paying for more customers and start taking care of the ones that you have. Here's an example: the struggling HVAC contractor. He is out there buying leads like crazy. He's got his guys running five, six, seven calls a day. They're making 300 bucks a repair, right? Some of them are turning over to leads, sure. But what does that $300 repair look like? 300 times five is $1,500, right? Maybe he got seven calls and he made $2,000. You have to pay him over time. He's worn out, she's worn out, working so many long hours. And you had to pay all those leads, advertising. Versus the HVAC next generation entrepreneur, he's running three to four service calls per day. He's slowing down. And instead of doing one repair or one service call per house, he's doing two or three or four per house. He's already there. Why take that $300 repair and leave it when there's all this other stuff that needs to be brought to the homeowner's attention? All you got to do is bring it up and properly communicate it in a way that they get it. So if you go to a $900 average and you only run three calls, you made $700 more than your competition who's paying overtime and paying for advertising. You didn't pay for either one. You simply slowed down and took care of the customers that you had. Well, Pete, I can't do that. I, I won't get to all my customers. That's okay. You're going to have to learn to prioritize and put a system in place that allows you to realize your capacity and not compromise the quality of the work that you're doing. Now granted, when times pick up, you may divert some of this over into your off season, but that's what this is for to begin with, okay? So that's just the tip of the iceberg. Overpaying for advertising, you know, your service tickets are too low. Here's another one, your equipment sales leads aren't fully executed. They're not fully mature. You get, your, your covered advisor may get a lead from your tech, but man, if they get your lead from a tech who's done this level of service, they're ready to buy, for goodness sake. Your comfort advisor is going to love those leads because they close them. They get them. Your customers are being underserved. Your technicians hate to sell and you're asking them to sell. Go put in that UV light. Sell some more maintenance agreements. You need that stuff, but you don't want them selling it. We need to consult our way into sales, not sell. You have no work during the off season or low work during the off season. You're losing big profits on the work that you do have when you go out. Your technicians are seasonally overworked, lots of overtime, wearing them out. 
and your month to month sales are out of control. In other words, from month to month, your bills come in about the same, from month to month, the money that you make doesn't, right? You make really good money one month and you're starving the next, trying to struggle to make your bills. And all of this just creates chaos for you, the owner, and you're overwhelmed and you know it. So the service techs perspective is important. They are often feeling pressured to hurry up and run and go to that nurse next service call. And it usually comes from the dispatcher, which is understand it. He or she is, are, are under pressure, okay? Gotta address this. We want the technicians to be proud of their work because that's what they want. They want to be proud of their work. They want satisfaction from giving their best work. They want to do what's right by the customers we mentioned earlier. They want to enjoy that customer's satisfaction and praise. Everybody wins when they get it, but it's the way that they get it that matters. Easily persuaded by customer pressure. They like the customers and the customer can, you know, come on, help me out. Do this on the side. There's all kinds of stuff that they may try depending on the customer. And, and, and you have technicians that are easily persuaded, influenced. You got to give them some relief on this in your process so that you win and the customer wins and your technician can be the hero. They hate to sell to customers, so don't make them do that. Allow them to consult instead and they get burned out by the long hours. Now, the customer's perspective is based on ignorance and misunderstanding at first, depending on how much experience they have. But before they invest, we have to deal with that. This is a process. And when you learn to take them from, I don't know, I don't, do I need that? What does that mean? Over to, okay, I get that. Yeah, give me two. <laughs> right? In other words, consumers hate to be sold, but they love to buy. So what we have to do in our process is shift that over and put your customers in power and in control by allowing them to understand exactly what all this stuff is and what it means to them. So marketing by delivering greatness is key, right? Being the best and walking the walk of the best is what it takes. And it's important to have an entire team working together. And by team, I mean your partners are your employees, sure, but your customers are also partners in this arrangement. Everybody's got to take care of everybody along the way. And in order to do this, we got to follow a process, step one, step two, step three, and think about dominoes, all right? If you push one domino, they all go down, but if you take in the middle of the row and pull a domino out and then push it, it breaks down at some point, right? It doesn't go all the way through. So we need a complete process in order to do this. Your secret weapon, and this is what's unique to this course, I think, among a few other things. If you're saying to yourself, yeah, Pete, we already do that. I, I don't think so. I, I don't think anybody else in the market is using this. I know we developed this with a team of contractors, and it's heavily built on psych what we learn in psychology and NLP and the way the mind, the human mind works and what shapes behavior, and we've got a secret weapon. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a live workshop, okay? It's called the Complete consultative service call process. Now there's other pieces to this machine, but we want to start here, guys. We're getting ready to go into some tough times. I'm pretty sure. And whether we're not, whether whether we do or whether we don't, what we the most important moment is the moment where your service tech in your business is where your service tech is interacting with that customer. That's where the magic happens or it fails. And if we get that handled, right we can really make a big difference now you got to be thinking about all of the different aspects to this increase your service ticket averages well listen guys if because consumer spending goes down and they quit replacing equipment you better raise your average service tickets reduce callbacks you're gonna have to cut unnecessary spending and if you're out paying your guys to go back and do something a second time because you had them so rushed they couldn't do it right the first time or they didn't have the proper structure to where they accidentally miss a step because they weren't following a process that costs you money. Increase equipment leads, the sales leads, okay? 
we may see that number subside substantially. So you need a process that is going to really, really fortify that attitude, uh, that uh, uh, that opportunity to transition over into a sale, because it's hard for people to come up with that kind of money when they know they may not have it in the in in in, in the very near future. They may be dealing with some uh, tougher issues. Reduce direct costs. We're talking about pay per click and pay per lead and all that other stuff. Don't go out there buying those yet. Now, keep in mind there's a dynamic, okay? When you're new, you gotta get a lot of new leads. You don't have a customer base yet. But when you've been around forever, you could literally just stop advertising and just live off of the customers that you have. And so when you're new, you learn how to advertise, advertise, advertise. Well, somewhere in the middle, we it, it takes us a while to learn that lesson that Whoa, 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 we don't have to advertise like this all the time. What we need to do is look at what we've got in front of us and slow down. Reduce advertising, cost of customer acquisition. Increase profitability. You've got to make more money because you're going to have less work. Increase off-season valleys. Okay? If there's not any work out there and you're adding this process to your maintenance agreement visit, you will suddenly find that you do have plenty of work to do during the off season. Reduce high season peaks. If during the off season you went ahead and took care of all these all these stuff that your that your technicians came across, they're not going to break come the high season, and then you don't have all that on top of you in addition to all the new stuff coming in. Does that make sense? Increase customer satisfaction and loyalty. This is going to be the most important piece to you during the downtime that's coming. You better have those customers really in love with you, not play in you like they play the waitress at the local restaurant. You've got to improve that company customer bond, not technician customer bond, company customer bond. Last thing you need is a technician leaving, starting his own business and taking half your customer base with you. You've got to improve your reviews in both quality and quantity. This process will work for this. And we're talking specifically about economy proofing your business it may not hit your areas bad, it may be worse. Improve your associate or employee morale. If you'll slow down and give your technician something to be proud of, they'll do a better job for you. Uh, you can, this will help you increase them in their pay and their benefits and you know, restore that loss balance that they may have due to this business with their very family. We're gonna be working live on this one, okay? This program will be recorded. But before we do the, rec the official recordings, and I'm, I'm redoing all of these guys. Um, I've done this in two different sections. We're putting it all in one program now. So we're going through this live, and we're going to make sure we got every piece covered and everything's been explained thoroughly with a live group. And if you're part of that group, you, well, you're in a good position uh, to take advantage of it. Now, as the recordings come out, you'll have access to this, and your team will have access to it uh, in for future use. So... Each Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m., we're going to be doing this uh, starting uh, here this month. These live workshops will be recorded and uploaded for your review, but we're going to have some pre-recorded stuff as well. Some of these are before and some of these are after. There may, there may be homework as, uh, uh, involved as well as you progress, okay? But you're going to have the full access to all the, all the materials after they're recorded, pre-recorded or post-recorded, okay? So there will be downloadable um, documents that you can utilize and you're going to be granted access to the support group that we are forming for this. This does include an industry, HVAC industry secret formula that nobody else has. And if you don't learn anything else but this, it'll absolutely be worth it. We got to work on that rapport. That's your customer experience. We've got a process, right? The, the, not written in stone, you can have your version of this, but you gotta have a process. That will build the trust, that will, or the rapport that leads to the trust. Then you have to have that communication without words. This is part of what we're talking about. This is why, the, the myth and the facts. This is, you think that they're understanding you. This makes sure that they understand you and they know what it means to them. And they do move forward and invest. And then once you have that, 
the communication has been made that's what this is about you can slow down with the same customers that you have make two three times the money and have two three times the customer excitement and satisfaction you ought to see the reviews on this what about a job well done what about the technical aspect of it we were throwing in here a little uh, program we put together it's about 49 pages on basic diagnosis if your team follows this your technical team if they'll follow these steps and verify the settings that we uh, we're, we're kind of outlining here in this in this here it's straight cool and in, in heat uh, in uh, I guess uh, heating systems uh, most of it will apply to heat pumps although you know you've got a few things extra in there but it all applies um, for a residential call this will get you through a good 95% of the calls if, you, if your team checks these things they won't miss it they, they won't miss the repairs okay but it, it gives them something that, that will help them um, have a structure to the technician process for example if you were a technician back when you were younger when you started the business and you hire another tech and you're assuming he's doing the same checks that you did guess what they're not the reason they miss stuff that you wouldn't is because they don't know how to check it or they don't think it's important we've got to get past just assuming things are right we have to actually verify that that's the point okay so once your technicians they do have the time to slow down and do things right and they do have a process they can follow and they know they've done a great job they get to take pride in their work and that's what it's about they need to be happy too and so what is your best defense was well, a great offense and through HVAC greatness this technician program that we put together for you and we're gonna do this be doing this live is uh, well it's a game changer so we've got an early bird special there are six one-hour sessions we'll probably go over on some of these you'll have access to all the recordings going forward you have access to all the support tools a support group an online course going forward so if you have people that need to see the uh, information and they weren't part of the live you've got a, a resource there okay and so it's just in time for things to slow down normal price on this I think when we're done we'll probably be somewhere in this price range here but in your case if you catch this early bird we're gonna take care of you so let, let's say you, you used to do $300 repair and one time you get this program working for you and you make it turn into a $900 repair hey, you just you're $600 up <laughs> well you just paid for the whole program and more that was the point at the early bird level is $397 and guys that's six weeks of live training it's group training but it's, it's live training and the groups are small okay you can get in and be a part of this for less than 400 bucks okay so I'm gonna end this recording here let me look real quick and see if we got uh, what if we miss meetings so yeah I'm recording these live these will be uploaded on the platform which you'll have access to so if you do happen to miss one you can go back and watch that in your leisure and let's see can employees join yes if okay so this is done in a way it'll be presented to everybody so part of the time I'm talking to the business owner part of the time I'm talking to the technicians and in and, and any key employee right so we're transparent on this there's nothing to hide we're not gonna have any secret information that you don't want your employees to know so this program you can have everybody in there okay and so I think that answers that and so it'll be at 4 p.m. Eastern time uh, two times a week each Tuesday and Thursdays we will be live there'll be recordings they'll be uploaded there'll be homework there'll be stuff but we'll try to keep it in a way that you can still run your business and everything else. Just pop in there, get the information, and we'll give you small bites on this so that by the time the three weeks are up, you've been through the program, you get it, and it's delivered in palatable bites so that you can roll this out to your team and get this on board. Remember, this is not training. This is change. Your technicians don't need to be told. They need to, be, they need to buy in. And that's what we're going to do is show you how to get total buy-in from your team and transitioning from a service technician or worse yet a selling service technician over to a consultative service technician that your employees uh, that your customers will love okay so if there are not any more questions Pete Ramsey here HVAC greatness check out that link pop in there and jump on and if you do miss the first live one or second live one because you're late getting in here don't worry about it we'll post those uh, you'll be able to catch up, okay? Because we got a lot of uh, groundwork to lay in the meantime. Pete Ramsey here, HVAC Greatness. I'll see you on the next one.